The Bible contains a surprising amount of crude and offensive language, and our translations sometimes have to modify this. Rehoboam wanted to emphasise he was tougher than his father Solomon by saying, My little finger is thicker than his penis. That's my translation. Translators have a tough time with that one. I sit on an international Bible translation committee and I remember one afternoon when we went through every instance of booty in the Bible, changing it to plunder or looting, and no one around the table would explain to me why we were doing it. The meaning of the word changed in North America before it reached England. Many aspects of language change with time. In the gentle days of my youth, church leaders were concerned to protect us from verses in the King James Version that used bloody or shut up. The Bible occasionally contains deliberately offensive language. When Paul wanted to contrast his old religiosity with the new life he'd found in Christ, he said it was all crap compared to Christ. The word he, uh, he chose, that's scubalon, wasn't a polite word like feces, but a crude word that's found in ancient graffiti. He wanted to shock people out of their comfortable religion. Jesus uses offensive language when criticising the religious establishment. He calls them hypocrites, children of hell, blind fools and snakes to their faces. By this stage in his ministry, there had been many opportunities for them to recognise Jesus as Messiah sent from God, but they were too set in their ways. In exasperation, he publicly insulted them, trying to shock them into recognising their faults. There's even some blush-worthy language attributed to God. In Isaiah, he says, Even our righteous acts are as filthy as used menstrual pads. This is usually translated coyly as filthy rags. It's deliberately meant to shock. Even King James himself, when speaking to a conference of clergy to promote his new Bible, said to a group of Puritans, I give but a turd for your argument. At the other end of society, crude and violent words pepper conversations until they become mere punctuation. If you use swear words all the time, what's left when you wish to demonstrate anger or disgust? Suppose you see drug pushers trying to sell to kids outside your children's school. Do you ask them politely to move along? Or do you tell them roundly what you think of them and their trade? Strong language does have a valuable function, and it's effective if it accurately communicates emotion or urgency. But this can only happen if it's used sparingly. Paul says, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. He wasn't referring to the salty language of sailors. Salt mostly came from mines rather than evaporation. And this mix of salt and sand could lose its flavour if it got damp, as Jesus warns. If you then used this flavourless salt, it merely added grit to a meal. This is like using gratuitously offensive language. Instead of adding a little spice to enhance your reply to someone, you end up adding nothing but grit that makes their teeth grind. In the Bible, crude language is used for making a forceful point or creating a memorable analogy. Sometimes we need to genuinely demonstrate our anger or disgust. At those times, we should ask ourselves, Will my words inform and motivate the recipient, or will they act like grit, resulting in nothing but increased friction? God bless.